What's up, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Thought Provoking Podcast today. Got some returning guests today. My Nigerian brother, yeah. Marcus. Yeah, it's good bullshit, yo. What's up, what's up? How y'all doing? Got my melanin sister over here, Miss Nikki. Hey y'all, what's up? Today we're talking about is love enough to sustain a relationship? But before we get into that, normally I do a shout out. Well, I have a dope quote for you guys. I got something for y'all today. You can only pick two, and they're free for life. Free massages, free house cleaning, free gas, makeup, alcohol, or pizza, whenever you want it. I'm going to read them again if y'all need them. Y'all need them again? Yeah, one more time. Massages, house cleaning, gas, makeup, alcohol, pizza. Free gas okay. and free massages. Damn. Any reason why you want them to? Uh, because gas is high as hell. Yes, Lord. That's like another bill. Bless Lord. <laughs> yes. so, so that would cut down on costs. Uh, free massages just because massages are expensive also. And if you can get them whenever you want them or need them, that's a good deal. What about you, my brother? Uh, I should have went first because same too. Uh, for different reasons though. Well, different reasons for the massage. Gas has draft pussy. Like that's for damn <laughs> sure. Um, massages because with the work I do with the physical labor, like I always need the um, like the relieve stress and all that other shit. I'm good on pizza. I don't need no. I I don't like people in my house. Mm-hmm. Like so, I don't want nobody coming to clean. I got mm-hmm. that. Like we got that clean at the crib. Shit. It right. Like so, yeah. Definitely gas and massages. I'm gonna switch it up a little bit for y'all. I'm gonna do the gas. Okay. But I'm gonna roll with makeup. I'm gonna roll with makeup. All right. I wanna sell them both. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Yeah, get paid. I wanna sell them both. <laughs> okay. That's okay. an instant stream of income. Women yeah. is gonna buy that makeup. That is a given. Yeah. So I'm gonna and have to whoever roll. you attract, mm. you could give it to them. Might you make a pay for it, though. A discount of price, though. It's her love language. She likes makeup. Yeah. Give it to her. So let me get a little, little inside look into y'all life here. How has it been for y'all this year with how the pandemic has affected so many folks? How has your life been this year? Um, This year, I feel like it's just starting to come back to normal. Like, mentally, I was so... I had a period of like having a mental fog and just I don't know I think it was like PTSD because mm. I work I work in healthcare and I took care of COVID people like I took care of people I've seen so many people die so it was really traumatic for me. Oh boy! During the and just having to stay in the house and the masks and all this other stuff so that was difficult. This has probably been one of the best years that I've had in a long time. Um, as far as, I don't know, just really appreciating life, getting out, trying new things. So it's been good. That right there. So what would you rate yourself mentally on a scale of one to 10? Today, I'm an eight. Mm, I like that strong eight. What prevents me from being a 10 is, I don't know, there's always room to, you just can't be perfect all the time. There's always room to have appreciation and gratitude. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at 8. I'm doing okay. Okay. My brother, how has your year been with the pandemic and everything going on? Has it affected you any? Um, Honestly, this might have been the best year of my life. Mm-hmm. Straight up, like as you know, bought a house. Bought a house. Bought a new whip. New whip. Bree got a new whip last year. Um, yes. Already got a new whip. All uh, my right, bad. Now. she graduated with her master's she this year. Graduated. Like it's. I know that's she, right. The last two years have been like literally from the time the pandemic like came to existence or whatever, like around November of last year. Um, I started or well, the year before that, twenty nineteen. I had just started the new job. Like new job. So when it seemed like the world was going like this, my whole life was going like this. Like, Talk so, heavy, my so brother. It, it really wasn't like I was affected that year. Just the actual okay, things are closing up, people are suffering extreme health issues, passing and all like yeah, that's traumatic. That's but as far as like my 
close knit circle, my everyday life, my close ones, and all of that. We were straight. It, That's uh, all my kids straight. Bree straight. Mom straight. Like family. Like it's we was good. I had family members get married and all this other. Like just it's been a come up. So I can't complain. Did you expect to have a year like that? Um. Yes and no. No, because I didn't know exactly when it was going to take off. Yes, because I had been telling Brie for the longest, okay, this year we're doing this. This upcoming year we're doing this. So it was like we was always planting those seeds that, okay, these are the goals. So whatever we need to do as far as walking and working in that direction, speak it into existence first. Like put it out there. Like if you got to, write it down, see the goals. But I had always had, plan- okay, look, we're going to be here by such and such time. I don't, I don't necessarily know the steps, but – we gonna be here, so just after standing a few times, tugging on lifelines, um, as you know, talking to you over the couple of years, listening to that, doing that again, doing the work. Oh yeah, we in the right financial bracket. We we got the right this and that going on by now. Yeah, let's put these put this shit in motion and all that. And one thing after another came to fruition. I like that. So right. with everything that you've named, where you at on a scale of one to ten mentally? Honestly, outside of some bullshit that happened at work last night, which is just typical work shit, I can't complain. I got to be like at a nine. Because, yeah, again, nine. Um, and I'm more happy for her as opposed to what I got going on. Like, she's going to embark on another um, career path, on like another accelerated level. So it's like I ain't got nothing to complain about. My kid's healthy. All of them doing good in school. The baby boy getting bigger and more more intelligent like as the hour goes past i ain't got no complaints my mama's straight like so yeah i like that right there i would say um this has been a good year for me as well um work got a little slow but i got an opportunity to kind of self-reflect um get out of that work mindset start finding more things that i enjoy for me um I would say on a scale of 1 to 10 where I'm at mentally, I've been at a 7. Um, I don't feel like I have much going on that's, you know, stressful or anything like that. But one thing that I will say that I've appreciated this year that has, that has kept me afloat mentally, having a good core group of people to reach out to when you're going through yeah, some or need to express whatever you got going on and get somebody else's insight to say, Hey, am I tripping? Am I dealing with this? Right. So mm-hmm. I would say I'm at a strong seven, um, definitely shooting for an eight or higher though, but we, we definitely get there. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get it. Is love enough to sustain a relationship? We going to let the lady of the house go first. <sighs> You know, even as emotional as people think women are, love alone, that feeling of love, like, first of all, what is love? Yeah. It's different for everybody. Love for me, um, it's a feeling to an extent, but no, it does not sustain a relationship. Um, not just alone, love alone. It takes a lot to sustain a relationship. I mean, love is important. But um no, I don't, I don't yeah. think it does. Do you want me to do you want me to um You got the flow. You got the expound flow. on that. I think love for me is more about how you make the other person feel in a relationship more than it has to do with how you feel in a relationship facts. because that love facts. that feeling like fades quickly you could be triggered by something they can annoy you you could be irritated and i can't necessarily say like there have been moments where you're like just like oh i'm i still love this person because there there are moments where you find yourself not even liking the other person so the love is the things you decide to do even in those moments where you don't really feel like <laughs> you want to do them, mm-hmm. but you do them anyway. Cause that's like, that's the choice you make. That's like the commitment you make to the situation or, um, yeah, I, I, it's not a feeling that type of feeling that like romanticized type of feeling that our culture has, where it's like, you know, the Prince Charming type of, it's not that. What you see on Facebook is what she's telling you. It's not really that. It's not that. No, that's no, not that close. 
I'm gonna mm-hmm. let my man get in on this. What, what you, you think, Marcus? Where, where you at with it, my brother? Uh, shit. Um, Just think about before you you answer. You gotta go home to somebody. So uh, I know you, it's you better be correct. And we be having these conversations. Um, sh- absolutely not. Like not even close. Because the way I view it, you know, I'm a big Monopoly player. Me, Trav, and Jew, we've been doing that shit since we was in college. I treat love like the two hundred dollars for pass and go. You gotta go around the board to get the two hundred, or at least you gotta move off go. It's like love is the end goal. You mm-hmm. never start off with the prize. Like you gotta build trust. You have to put in the work. You gotta experience the ups and the downs. Like you have to not necessarily break down, but you have to get close enough with someone for them to let you in, learn their ticks, they learn yours, like experience the the trial and tribute, like all that real shit, that's what love is. But yeah. it's also lost when shit arises and you can't overcome it. So it's like it's tough. The just the action alone, okay, what attracted me to you? Um your your mindset, your your outer appearance, your work ethic. Um if you're a good parent, if you already got kids, if I don't have kids or if you got kids, it's like all of these attributes. Now, let's say you stop doing X, Y, and Z. Like, and I don't mean like you're affected to where you can't do. No, you just choose not to be a good person in these areas anymore. Does the love keep that? Absolutely not. Like, because I grew to love you based off of X, Y, and Z. So if you're not doing that and are you falling short and you don't seem to give a fuck, I can't continue to love you because that love was gained based off of what I saw. So, no. Nah. So then the question arises, is love conditional? Absolutely. 1,000%. Okay. I got to agree. I definitely got to agree. 1,000%. Really? I, 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 got, I, really? I, I have to. There are conditions to love? Or, yeah. to, or to maintain love, to sustain love? There are conditions for it, it, y'all. It's conditions yes. to like. Yes. Don't, don't even open up the door to love. Like it, all, Everything in life is conditional. Because you only let a person in so close based off of the fact that you have let down a guard or you feel that there's a level of I won't betray you I trust you so if you I guess mess that up for lack of a better term shouldn't you love them regardless I think the only thing that's unconditional to a degree is the love that you have for your kids and I think that that's to a degree because really? if, if your kid becomes Jeffrey Dahmer or Jim Jones or Hitler you still gonna love them I can't. Okay. I can't imagine myself not loving my child because of a choice that they made that affects their life. I think if if you're a parent that you have actually um, know for a fact, I ain't fell short. Like, ain't no perfect parent, but you know, you just showed up and showed out for your kids since they came into the world, before they came into the world, and they do some bullshit that you know wasn't instilled in them from day one, and they just out there doing some wild shit. That's that could kind of. Mm. That's their life. That's their choice. True. I did what I can. Yeah, and, uh, I, I'm I don't. The torch. I don't think I mean, no other, no other being on this, especially not one that you're trying to build a relationship with. Nobody else is. Like I don't even think that that feeling is possible because again, that means that no matter what you do, no yeah. matter what you do, I'm going to love you. Reg- not saying that we got to be together, but I'm going to love you regardless. Yes. And that's not true. Not no matter what you do. No, not kids, but as far as like. I get what you're saying. That is so surprising that both of y'all feel that way. You feel I otherwise? Know for a fact. Okay. That that I'm there. So, just circling what are, back. What are the to, conditions to to, you know, receive your love? Oh, I'm there. I got them broke down there. <laughs> okay. See, see, I knew my brother right. over here was gonna kind of show okay. me up because the first time we did our episode, you know, <laughs> pe- people was in there bragging about my brother like it was okay. his podcast. So I had to make sure that I get my stuff in I, order. I need to hear I this. Talking at my oh yeah. Go ahead. So, in my opinion, I think starting off, it's two different types of love. Okay. You got that puppy love, that mm-hmm. that romantic, you know, in the beginning. The butterflies. Type, the butterflies. So that's the, the calling you a lot. If you want to throw in the sex. The going out, the gifts, um, but I feel like after a while, what's going to lead to the relationship propelling yeah. from that? Mm-hmm. So then that's when we step into the companionship is where I'm at. See, my brother ain't think I was going to go there. Okay. <laughs> we go into the companionships. Here's a little competition over okay. here on the low, just so you know. <laughs> okay, that's when the respect comes in, the forgiveness. Mm-hmm. You can need some of that. Mm-hmm. Evolving together. Mm-hmm. Can't just be me. 
we got to do this thing together. You can't just be them. Okay. Sometimes Location. Sometimes just be the other person True. involved and then you stagnant. You know what I'm saying? We always say what we want, but some, uh, you know, sometimes we the problem. Too. A little patience. Okay. Common goals. You know, I don't want to be the person that I'm talking about success and building a legacy with family and things of that nature. And you just kind of like. Yeah, I thought I wanted that, but I'm kind of cool with it. Because yeah. now, you know, we can't feed off of each mm-hmm. other at that point. Yeah. It don't align That's with my, where I'm trying to go. Alignment all. is important. Sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Consistency. Consistency. To choose each other over and over. Okay, the I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, to choose each other over and over. Okay. When times get hard. Okay. So... With that list there, you know, I, I definitely think that it plays a factor because, you know, a lot of times we just sit there and say, man, you know, I didn't realize your mindset was really like this. Yeah. Like when I got with you, that's not what I remember. Change, of, they, that's what they, you learn. They people change. change and they grow. You, that's why people grow apart. Outgrow. You know what I mean? And even talking about that right there, if love was enough to sustain a relationship, how do you fall out of love? I don't know. I think they're all really just terms, like really flowery terms that we use. Mm -hmm. But I can still love a person and not want them in my, you know, and not see that we're not compatible for whatever reason. And then I can, you know, I'm going to have to remove you from my life, but I can still love you. I think I I quickly start to like you. I think, it, you know, what I loved about you once I realized, I guess at that point, you kind of fooled me <laughs> or I didn't really pay attention to the signs that this wasn't. I think we love before we realized. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you, you kind of just threw me the oop because that, um, Chris Tucker said it. And I think the Chris Tucker live, um, this on Netflix, the stand up. He was like, when you first get with a person, you're not even dating them. You're dating that representative. Yeah. So it's like everything that you fell in like or in love you, with yeah you like, love that that's, about them anyway that's some fake shit yeah. like you ain't even met them yet like and i think it's I really attract it's yeah. just the, the initial attraction you really are attracted to someone that's which all. which will fade after i give it i give it the long term six to eight months once you again learn each other's ticks yeah you know a real person after that first real argument to see how they're gonna mm, respond. That first time to, they get upset with you, that's yeah, when you really that's when you person. really they know character the, come out. <laughs> like when you when you I'm find out where they really wine. like, I'm about to sip on this wine. <laughs> like for real, for real. Like when you find out how how far they're willing to take it off of a disagreement or a yes. misunderstanding, not even a misunderstanding. You deliberately did some shit. Let's say that you knew it was wrong or that you probably knew it hurt them. How they respond to you after that? That's the face value that you need to hold them at. Every from yeah. every from every point on till they show you otherwise because all that other love oh no it's okay he <laughs> like no I don't really no no niggas be caring women be well, caring like when uh, once you see how mad a person can really get that's who you're dealing with like not to say that they're gonna be mad twenty four seven or happy twenty four seven but you need to know what a person's limits are because if you don't know all that that's love. why you gotta test them see I like to be crazy in the beginning so let's just get yeah, that's, away that's let me start this shit. argument you know what I'm saying let's let's do this and then <laughs> yeah. then you can see how I am is is this something you really want to do or not but I try not to take it too far you know but you gotta test the waters it's a, it's a test now you know we always want to know how did that work out yeah did, 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 did you have somebody that passed the test several so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They didn't pass the test. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they didn't pass it. All right, now. Okay. 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 I want to ask y'all. Can you love someone and still cheat? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Again, absolutely. I, I asked that quickly, but yes. Mm. First, yeah, of course. Because the cheating is really not about... The cheating is like the selfish uh, need that's not being filled over here it's not really about that person uh, you be madly in love and be like you know what i'm gonna double over here real quick i'm gonna come back i'll be back you know what i'm saying where do you think that come from um human nature just human nature. we like our needs being met and if the need ain't met somewhere you are gonna you're going to look for it elsewhere i don't care what people say they want they will eventually they end up i feel like with guys we can love someone and still cheat 
because for a lot of us, we don't have an emotional connection to the person. Um, once the sex is happening, everything that I didn't say to you during the moment, once I get my explosion off, mm-hmm. I don't mean that no more. I okay. get up and go on about my business. Do you feel like women can do the exact same thing? or is Certain that a real women. Connection? It just depends on a woman. I'm the type that can do that, but everybody can't. Like, it's not, it's never like an uh, emotional connection type of thing for me. On the cheating aspect, like if I if I decided to cheat, it's not because I really like this person. It could be the the same thing, like that new feeling, that new attraction. Like, let me try this over here. Mm-hmm. I'm be like, oh, all right, well, it's fun while last, and I'm gonna go on back. <laughs> I'm gonna head on out. Thank you, but it's not like a. Mm-mm. Where you at with it, my brother? Um, I think it's all in a person's reason for cheating. Because you have people who cheat out of greed, people who cheat out of selfishness, and then you have those that cheat. Because, like it's Nicole selfish. said, yeah, like it's you may not feel like your needs are being met at home, and I think that's the worst one. Mm-hmm. Because when you cheat out of that reason, it's because you really feel like, okay, this ain't working over here, and you trying to fulfill something Especially that you, if you aren't getting been vocal about it you yeah, have conversations yeah. about it and the person just not really willing for whatever reason you know maybe they're going through something too but it's like okay well which then is what do you want me to do like and that's why again the lines of communication have to stay open even if you don't see either because you don't have to agree with a person to have communication with them but when a person feels like they aren't being heard human nature is i'm not just fin to wallow in this yeah. predicament to satisfy you mm-hmm. like and again not saying that i don't want this relationship that i don't value you as a person all of those nice platitudes but i'm human at the end of the day yeah. so okay i'm steady coming to you i'm coming to you about blah 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 for whatever reason over and over yeah for whatever reason yeah. the conversation ain't being heard i'm being ignored like it, that too you're not taking me seriously i'm not taking you seriously if you coming to me you don't love me anymore. Uh, whatever. I think that's how I process love. Like, if my need's not being met, and I've discussed it, and we've talked about it, and I've tried to be patient, like, I'm like, well, then, now I'm offended, because I'm like, then, I don't feel loved. I mean, it, it, but see, that's that's valid, because love is it's an action word. Like, yeah. you can't just say it. Like, yeah, we all have lives, jobs, careers, kids, Everybody. hobbies, all of that. You can't be so wrapped up in your everyday life and going to comments that you ignoring the person that you're in a relationship with and or in the house. You call with. yourself, yeah, being yeah, like interested it in or it you don't work like trying that. to, you know, move it forward or whatever. You're right. You're exactly right about that. Okay, so it's like, okay, I didn't we we've been beating our head on this couple particular topics. This again, six months or whatever. Half the year. Like, we cool one moment, we cook we not cool the next, we arguing about this. Like I ain't making no heads way that way. You ain't making no heads way this yeah. way. We we at this point we just coexisted. At some point, somebody's going to push the boundary to either get a reaction or to get their own personal satisfaction. But both individuals are not just going to continue to be two ships passing in the night. Yeah. It's not going. To, it's not going to continue. Not to be that cohabitate. Way. Yeah, no. Who's in separate spaces then? Because you know. again, that's where that growing apart comes. I'm learning to exist without you, and you're in my face. I'm learning yeah. to exist without you, and you're in my face. Yeah. So it's like, okay, how do we get back to what got us here? Not saying That's it's rough. right. Again, I'm I'm not condoning cheating or whatever the case no, may be. No, me either. But sometimes it's a wake up call. Yeah, like oh, oh this motherfucker serious. Like, oh, like this motherfucker really might leave. I don't me. have to be here. I can move on. Yeah, right. Like if and you really want me here, like because people get complacent. Gonna, then, like, not, then they want to change. Just like I equate it to a job. When you want a job, when you first get hired, you there early. You you stand right. over. You doing all the extra shit that your boss asking for. Like all that extra shit because you want to let them know, I value this opportunity. I don't want to lose it. Thank you for taking the time. Blah 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 blah. Once you've been there about a year, you start showing up a little late. Like you might say a little slick shit back to the boss. Policy, yeah, like, like, like you, yeah, yeah, you learning it. You 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 you, you playing with the point see. system and uh-huh. all that other shit. Like like you 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 flexing your weight time. a little bit once you get your little seniority. But once you realize like you done fucked around enough and now you in probationary not probation but like like you in like 
fear of losing your that job. Like they done wrote you up a couple times. Yeah, yeah. They done wrote you up a couple times. Then you straighten right on up. Like, I don't oh, know why we like that. We oh, like, this shit ain't as sweet as I thought it was. For the next six, three yeah, months. like mm-hmm. like it's it's real. And I think relationships are just like that because you think that once I got this person, that uh You can't lose they, No, like this motherfucker's human like you. They have like desires and wants and like want to be loved and respected and treated right just like you want that yeah. so you can't move like it's just you in a relationship That's, so by yeah. you being a man let me put you on the spot if your woman has told you her needs haven't been met and she step outside the relationship i'm a killer say no <laughs> can you forgive it i gotta be honest um no no, I, no, I ain't gonna say that. I bullshit you. No, not. you can't. We gotta have a deep conversation because we gotta talk about the extent that it went and how it started, and that's when you gotta put pride to the side and actually ask yourself. But that's the thing; like you're not realizing all along. No, because again, I know when a person ain't happy in my little situation. True. I'd be like, we need to have a what's going on? But, like but, the energy is but, off. But see this that, that but not... see that depends on when you when your wake up call hit. Because okay. uh, sometimes some people... Yeah, it's just like when you tell your kids like, yeah, do this. And you and you know they hear you, but they so focused on that game or whatever it is they doing, they're not really paying you no attention to you raise your fucking voice or you come yeah. in and you throw some shit around. Oh, shit. Yeah, and like they straighten up like I've been talking for the past five minutes. Yeah. You just wasn't really giving a fuck. So I'm not gonna say um that we couldn't move past it. Excuse me. But I'm not so... I'm not going to say that I'm going to be quick to forgive. But because of who I am, I, I just don't... I'm not going to throw the relationship away. Immediately. Not to say that I'm going to throw it away in the long run. But it's going to be some real type of... Real conversation. How we get here. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like, no, seriously. And again, my, above all else, I'm a man with pride. That shit going to be hurt. Most so, men are. Yeah, like mm-hmm. it's... And they, but see, I've always been a person, and Brick can attest to this. I have never subscribed to cheating being it be all end all to a relationship on both parts, man. That's and how I'm like, that's, uh, like because again, that's not the worst thing. If, it's, it's not. Happen. It's not the worst shit. Hmm. You you can agree to that part. Cheating is not the worst okay. thing. No, I've been cheated on them. You know what I'm saying? It's like I've been <laughs> I've dealt with this a lot. I know right. how to cope with this. That's I, not the worst thing in the. the in and a if you can't get past that, because. Yeah, you have to understand that people are going to be attracted to other people, whether they're with you or not. Like, I'm gonna be out. I'm like, damn, he look good. And I got, you know what I'm saying? I can have a man at home. You be like, it's just that little thing that clicks to say, I ain't gonna try nothing, but I'm gonna look at him. You know, so the, you're gonna always be attracted self-check. to people. You just have to snap up real quick. Self check. Is what I have at home worth losing for like a little couple of seconds of my personal pleasure? You just have to, you know, weigh that option and decide. But so is love conditional to you? Um, I think it has its conditions, but I think, like, I think because I am a woman, I've been programmed to view love in a different way. So, um, I could really see myself feeling like beyond a lot of the flaws or a lot of the negative things that a a guy might have, like I could still like really love you. Yeah. And I can say that from personal experience, but I'm just like, a. I use the word love a lot. It's probably not like a, what I'm really feeling toward a person. But if I'm, if I have a real strong energy with somebody or if I'm really feeling somebody, but it's really all based on me. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really it's really personal for me because the moment he chew wrong, I'll be like, I don't even love him no more. It didn't got real. Straight up, it didn't got real. I'm like, what's that love? He's what smacking. Was that? He's smacking. <laughs> he smacks I'm when good. he chews. Mm-mm, this is not going to work for me. We I'm out. We won't make it past day one if you smack when you chew. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. like, You know what I'm saying? We, we use the word love, but I really don't know what that is. That you really feel when you are feel connected to a person initially. It's an infatuation. That's all. It's, in tra- it's attraction, but I think a lot of us force it too. We force it. You know, we we're vibing. We want, yeah. We, we vibing. Yeah. If especially if I've made up in my mind like I want you, 
I, I don't know why we are so possessive over people, but you know what I'm saying? Like, once I've made up in my mind that I want this to be a thing, I want you. Yeah, I, you're right. We do. We do force love. And we mm -hmm. can become a little bit controlling, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Me, yeah, especially. To, to make our, to, you know, fit our needs to be comfortable for us. Like, I know when I met you, you was going out, but I'm going to need you to stop doing that mm -hmm. now. You know what I'm saying? It's like. It's and you know what? That's real to hear a woman say that. Because you hear women, you hear men say that more than women yes, do. Like, like that's, that's the thing. Because it's yeah. like you're gonna meet somebody out. Like I met you out. We don't want that. I don't want you to be. Mm -mm. The temptation is gonna be there. Like it's it's something in the back of your mind. Yeah. People don't talk about it, but it's a thing. So, if we. But let me say this. Okay, we talk about love. Can love sustain a relationship? You know what prolongs a relationship? Y'all know what prolongs a relationship? I'm interested. Don't we stay in situations Haven't we stayed in situations longer than we needed to Sleeping with somebody No mm -hmm. it, it, It's a lot of people that definitely do it I think it's finance I definitely think it's finance I'm not, I, I'm not saying sex in a, in a positive aspect I'm just saying like y'all ever been with somebody And just like well we just gonna like I know this person not good for me mm -hmm. Maybe that's just something women do I don't know no, Men do it Men do like, it. But I'm, but gonna, I, I'm gonna call them tonight mm -hmm. Just because is. I'm gonna keep my numbers low. Let me let me let me double back. I'm gonna keep to my this. numbers low. I am dead. Oh, no, man. that's a real thing. Yeah, I know to a lot of people that that's a, that's a real thing. Like he is toxic for my life. But see, that's but the not the first time I heard really that. Really good. Though. I'm gonna keep my numbers low. About let me. I'm gonna call no, that's not the first time I heard a woman say that specifically. Like I was like, listening yeah, to a pod and, a, a, and a woman said like, yeah, like before I put some more notches on my belt. Yeah, I'll, I'll go, go back to something. I'll go back to something like because it don't count. Like it don't. Especially if you know, like you're like, well, I ain't really feeling them, but I know how he is in the bedroom. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've done it. But you know, men share that too. Okay. Because a lot of times, men feel like all of what you doing that's so great in that bedroom. I ain't finna let. I don't want you, but I ain't finna let you're you. You're not about to do that to nobody else. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Super possessive. Super possessive. Not gonna happen. Again, yeah, so he's talking about some shit that hurt pride like a motherfucker. Because we visual no. creatures. Absolutely. We visual. Wow. A lot of times the women is. It's a it's a emotional. It can be. Like I say, I can like block that emotional aspect. It don't have to be like no deep, intense feeling moment for me. Depending on who the person is. But it could just be like, you know, one here to quit it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So since we're looking at love being enough in a relationship, and we all agree that you need a little bit more, let me ask your opinion. If the relationship becomes strained because whatever you had down your list that attracted you to this person, now it's not the same. How do you get back to that initial connection that that good flow that good vibe that y'all once had when when certain things people are not checking off anymore i don't know i've really i've never i can't ever really say i've had like a checklist of things and i've that probably should have that would have kept me from a lot of dead situations but how do you get back to that you have to make it important you have to want the to keep the person in your life to me um you have to be really mentally strong because it's just about balance. Like maybe they're going through something. They're not able to be whatever you need them to be. Then you have to make that decision. Like, well, since I'm okay right now, you know, let me just keep being supportive, keep being whatever, Ho you know, hopefully they'll come back around, but, that's so risky because the other person may not even see all the stuff you're doing because they're in such a mental space with what they have going on that they're not even really appreciating you trying to stick beside them. So then you get to a point where you're just like, okay, well, now I feel taken for granted. Now I feel like I feel underappreciated. I don't know. It's, it's, it can be really tricky. You just have to want to be in it. You just have to want to. You have to want to stick it out. Because other than that, nothing really keeps a relationship like, I don't know, nothing really keeps, nothing is really um, concrete and just saying like, we'll always be together. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know what I mean? That's a lot. I don't know. Um, yeah, that to a T. 
it's the one um, because everything else is sustainable over time. Once you choose, okay, this is not where I want to be, whether yeah. you got to start from scratch or whether you could just pick up with what you got and make the same lifestyle. If you realize, okay, I done weighed my pros and cons, I done did my little Venn diagrams and all this other shit. Once you realize, like, okay, I'd rather be with him or her in this relationship than not without him or her. That really be the that's thing it. Like, right like there. That, like, that's the do nutshell. I still want because, like, you're going to take it to, okay, yeah, they done did this. I done did this. I done said this. They done said that. You're going to weigh all the options. Okay. What I, again, that, that cliche ass saying, like, I'd rather be miserable with you than happy with somebody else. Like, that is a well, real I don't thing. Want that. No, yeah, like, like, no, you don't want that. But I get what you're saying. Yeah, like, like, I don't want you with nobody else. So I'm going to try to figure out how to navigate right. this the best way I know but, how. But you get to that, like, and how you get back to it is. You got to, again, I made a status about it a couple months ago. You got to be willing to have a conversation. But most people don't want to have those because that requires accountability. Like, you can't just be and the motherfucker point, yeah, point yeah. your finger. You can't, yeah, it's you, you, you. Yeah. Okay, what part did you play? What did, right. what did you do? Because really, it, cause it's not just you being the victim yeah. 100%. Like, no one, one side or the other is ever yeah, the victim. Like, like, it's okay, a mutual. You mutually. saying I'm guilty of blah, 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 blah. What part did you play? Because it takes two people to have, whether it's a good or bad relationship, it takes two people to have that. Mm-hmm. So even if I'm just being a complete asshole, you allowed that. Yeah. And, and, I'm the, like, and I ain't trying to pass the buck, but it's like, okay. We do. We create environments that people live in. So if we're trying to get back to what initially brought us together, what attracted us to each other, we got to sit down, leave the anger and emotion and pride at the door. And be open about our feelings. You hurt me. How did I hurt you? Blah, 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 blah. Set boundaries. Yeah, I hurt you. We're not going to do this again. We're not going to go down this path. We're not going to say this. We're not going to do that. We're going to take more time to do blah, 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 blah. Like legit formulate a plan. Even like in a concrete set, writing stuff down and legit step by step. Like because at the end of the day, I don't want to be anywhere else. You don't want to be anywhere else. So let's do what we have to do. If here is where both of us want to be. Now, yeah. if we don't want to be here, fuck it. Like, I go my way, you go your way. But most of the time, you don't want somebody to just up and leave you because it's a sign of trouble or we ain't on the same page mm-hmm. and shit. So, yeah, you, you got to talk. I have that bad. I do. Most most people do. And I ain't going to lie. I'll be like, I'm out. I don't have to do No, like, <laughs> no, no yeah. bullshit. Yeah. That's how I'm I was raised. Clear. That's like, how I I, you, I bullshit you not. My guy that he told me as this? a child, he was know. like, You're the say what you got to say and, and be done. It don't even be just that. It's just my tolerance is so, especially if it affects me so, well, if I feel like it affects me, because a lot of shit probably just be, I'm dramatizing, but it's just like, I'm quick to be like, this is not going to work. I'm out. I had to get out of that. I really did. That's when I knew I really like cared about somebody or really called myself loving somebody. I was like, this is so difficult for me to stay in, but I'm willing to work it out just to, because I don't want this person, you know, I want this person in my life. So I'm going to have to like, I thought I had, had was healed. Do you hear me? I thought I had gone into this, this situation like healed. I'd be triggered. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just heal these little areas. I process a lot now. Like I process a lot about me, like a, it's not that it's hurting me, it's affecting me. Why is it affecting me so right. strongly? And a lot of times it's really like stuff I, I, or I think I said this in the last time I was on. Like a lot of, a lot of the, the issues that I have with another person is unhealed areas of myself from childhood. Mm, and I realize that. What I tell you, like when yeah. you talk about all the time, most I'd people, <laughs> most, most people <laughs> take their childhood traumas that, that were unhealed. However, you saw your parents maneuver in relationships, you take like unknowingly yeah. you take that or needs inter- that you never yeah. got met. Like you, you, my emotional you, you needs, take that I feel right like into a I love y'all, mom and dad. I love y'all, but uh, there were moments where I felt really alone as a child. So my little thing is my emotion. If my emotional needs are not being met in a situation, I'd be like, I'm out. I don't have to deal with this. Like I've been alone a long time. I'm not about to be with somebody and feel alone. Mm. But I'd be having to check that. Because it's like, well, they don't really even know that about you. Like, just calm down. Like, once I calm down and try to, like, really think about it, process it and everything. It's a conversation to have, but it's a difficult conversation. So, 
I remember the conversation like it was yesterday. I couldn't have been no older than like 16, 17. My guy daddy, Joshua Davis, Jr., rest his soul. We, okay, we name chop, drop. We, we chopping it up, and he was like, look, you know what me and your mom and all this shit going through, blah, 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 blah. This is what, and it was the, it was the best, worst advice he could have gave me at the time because I took it up until recently throughout my entire life, and I shouldn't have, but I was young, and I'm thinking that he gave me what worked for him. But in the long term, I don't think it really worked for him. Say what you need to say and leave. And I literally started doing that. Like I'll drop, i drop a relationship at the drop of a dime. Like, I'm not, finna, I ain't finna be the, I ain't finna be the dead horse. I ain't finna argue with you. Like, look, I done said it. You know where yeah. I stand. F- look, fuck you. Fuck this. And be, I, I'm and miserable. call myself really I liking happy. a person. Like, yeah, I'd be like, well, let me just. Like, you don't really, you can't back. really say you love a person if you're not really willing to be in that ring and fight once you feel that your needs aren't being met. So it's like, okay, I said I'm done. Now, she pissed, she tripping and all this other shit because I'm done. And I, I'm talking about instantly. Like, I moved on all with somebody else and shit. Like, mm-hmm. and then, like, oh, yeah, you must. Look, I said I wasn't happy. I ain't finna keep telling your ass. I'm not. Like, but that was terrible because. That's not real human interaction. Yeah. Like you just don't up and cut yourself off from another person. Yeah. That takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of emotional up and downs, prior and, and future conversations, and all this other shit. So like once I got like close to my thirties and shit, I'm like, okay, this ain't really working because I keep bumping my head on the same mm-hmm. on the same shit. What am, what do I need to do differently? Stop just leaving because. You gonna forever get to a point with somebody where it's like, well, okay, you gonna want to leave. Yeah, what's gonna make you stay? And once I started having those conversations with myself, it was like, okay, it can't be about the the equity and the financial shit that y'all build together. It can't be about the kids. When them kids are gonna grow up, you are gonna get used to that material shit. When you gotta look at that person every morning and every night and all that other shit, what's going to make you stay with them? Yeah. Not abuse type shit, but it's like, okay, I really want to be here. And I really want you here. Let's figure out where we're beefing it. What, mm-hmm. Like, what ain't working. Like, once once I got that in my head, I'm like, okay, stop being so quick to lose your feet. Like, I don't even argue no more. Like, I'll talk with you to death about some shit that yep, matters to me. Yes. And I swear to God, I, I'm not finna do the arguing. I'm not finna I'm do the raising either. my voice shit. Because at the end of the day, we aren't either. communicating anymore. We're mm-hmm. just talking at each other. Mm-hmm. So you trying to say some shit to hurt me? I'm trying to say some shit back to her too. Yeah, and nobody's listening. Yeah, nobody's like we don't give a fuck just... no more. I don't give a fuck. And it, it, sometimes you get to when you say that, like, well, fuck you, well, fuck you, <laughs> shit. Like, no, that, that don't work. I don't take it there, but I take it there. No, I That's definitely, okay. I definitely I mean, I have in the past, there. Like, but I'm, I'm so careful about how I handle people now because I'm like, everybody wants to make it about themselves. It's yeah. really not about me. Like, let me remove myself from this. It's really about what can I do. I say I love you. What can I do to make you comfortable? Or what can I do to... We got to figure this shit out. But, which is another important thing about sustaining love is you have to have the knowledge to do that. Like, knowledge is, a, is important. It's an important tool of love. Like, it have to, you have to have some awareness about you, where you are, emotional, maturity. It takes a lot. It do. It takes a lot. Are y'all in favor of couples, groups? So not like the retreats where you actually, you know, but forming actual groups where me and you are going through our little issues. We could talk to Marcus and his girl and get their perspective. And so you have some references. Before. You got to be in a relationship first to do that. Yeah. Okay. With, with some time, or you just be in a relationship. <laughs> huh? With some time, or just as long as you're in a relationship. Mm. Because, I, because I don't think you could really do that with new couples. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You have to be like an not no talking stage type stuff. Like you just gotta. No, go I ain't through. even talking about two three months in. Like because y'all probably y'all still got on y'all honey y'all y'all, y'all face. Yeah. Like 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 y'all ain't really bumped y'all head on no real shit yet. Okay. Like I need to. If we gonna do, I don't that, think it take years. No no, no no no. I don't think it take uh, no like, years. Uh, about, about six months. Yeah, about six months. Definitely. Yeah. Like to, again to where you had that first real. But I mean, you could still be in a talking stage with somebody at six months. Like yeah. It needs to get to a point where he's made his intentions clear. Like, look, I know we've been talking for six months or dating or whatever. Like, I really want this from you. I really need this from you. Like, it has to be a conversation about where exactly you are. Because a lot of times we'll be talking to somebody forever and be like, oh, that's my guy. And we just be talking. To Ain't you. no you know ground what rules established. What about somebody who is speaking from a place of growth? 
So they're technically like not me. not okay. So <laughs> I mean, if you want to put it out there, okay. You, what you, do you need you, to know? Please. You have a perspective on the do's and the don'ts, where where you went wrong. So you know, I think that it would be great to have somebody like you in a situation to where you're you're the neutral part. Okay, but the issue with that is a lot of people feel like your um, knowledge isn't valid because you're not currently in a. A lot of people like we to gotta base. Get out of that mind, so I swear to God, we a lot of get people of like to base validity um, off your actual experience on. Well, you know, you have all this to say, but you're single. Well, yeah, it, I know, but it's, I still it's that whole you can't teach me how to raise you kids can, if you yeah. ain't got nothing to tell me, which is the dumbest shit in the world. We do that as a people, and, we I, do that. and, and I would definitely want to throw this out. I have today. a lot of gems, a lot of wisdom about relationships, a lot of stuff I've learned along the way. But I mean, if people are willing to listen, I can. And the thing you about see it, it is, in the butcher block. I don't always all the time. Like, this is bad, but I don't always even follow my own advice. Like, I'll know better, but I just, you know, I do what works for me or what don't work for me, but I know how to handle my own shit. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, so even though I may advise you, I got some bomb, I got top tier relationship like advice. That. And don't take it yourself. Because, it's, because <laughs> I'm like, it's top traditional tier. and subjective. Like, what might work right now for this person is absolutely the complete opposite advice that I would give this person. Well, um,. I'm good at reading people and good at what will work for them based off like personality yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So if you telling me a situation and I know how you are, I know what, what this sounds pr- probably kind of crazy, but I usually know what works best for people based off of who they are. Mm-hmm. I don't always. Yeah. That's what, what I say. It's what conditional. What works for other people based off me. Like I know what works for me. Stuff that works for me don't generally work for other people, but like, I'm like, let me tell you what will work for you. I'm with it. And I got some, yeah, bomb ass relationship advice. You think you got some good advice to throw out there? But yeah, b- based off the person. Like, it's, I could be talking to somebody who's open about their life and formulate an opinion, an idea off that, as opposed to somebody who's very kept to themselves. I can't give you any advice because I don't know anything about you. Like, yeah. if you just say, yeah, I, I got relationship issues. Okay, well, what about <laughs> blah, blah, blah? Like, you're not giving me nothing to build on. Yeah. Of. So if you give me something to work with. We all do. I give you, give you the best in the world. Relationship issues. I need more. I got one for y'all. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. There's a woman who's married. She had a kid at an early age. And I think that's where the bond initially formed. Um. I think everything seemed to be all right, you know, build a family together, life, cars, the house, all, all of that great stuff. Have a couple years into the marriage and feels now that talking to other folks, she's gotten to a place where she realized she's lost herself. She thought that this idea of what marriage in her mind was ain't really cutting it. Mm -hmm. But feels guilty to leave because she feels, I built this family. What about the kids? How's he going to feel? All alone, suffering inside because she's lost herself. Okay. What would you tell this person? Where should I start? (laughs) Um, You should never make a decision based off your children. Mm -hmm. Because your life is your life. Children are very resilient. They will... Pick they'll, it up and keep moving. they'll pick it up and keep it moving if you are able to pick it up and keep it moving like you're the example of what you want your children to be that's the first thing um so uh is her is her, the lady has she always um been married to, to this, this the father of her child yes. this guy and she feel like she's lost herself yes um i feel like most of the time whether you're in a marriage really young or you're in a new relationship you tend to lose yourself along the way because you are just so invested in the damn relationship you're going to lose yourself so you just have to take a step back and be like let me just do things that make me you just have to get back to yourself at any point any relationship regardless if it's a marriage or not like i've lost myself in relationships too and i'm like well hey this isn't me like before I was with this person, I was really happy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm starting to get like, I don't know, a person that I really don't like. So you just have to start doing stuff that you used to like if it's not detrimental to the situation. Right. You know. What would you say? Well, the first question I would ask is, have you communicated this to him? Because truth be told, everything that you're feeling, 
not to make it about him. He makes he, feel. he could be feeling the exact same thing. So if you put that on the table, now it's a time for self-reflection on both parts. And again, because that feeling could be mutual, that's a very fixable situation. Yeah. And that and that does it's just because fixable. you feel like you lost yourself does not mean that you want to you exit the relationship. Back. Like and you can develop a situation to where, okay, you go out on certain days and do certain, and, and you figure out a hobby or whatever the case may be, to where you feel lively again and you feel like yes. you yourself again. Same thing with like it's come here, again. Like it, I know it's taboo, but communication, communication is really so key. Important. But you can't be so scared to be vulnerable with uh, with the person that you're supposed to be with. You got to open up and tell them like, hey, I feel like da 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 da. I feel like this this that and the third. Talk. Yeah, like you you got to be open because at the end of the day, people aren't mind readers. You could be feeling at your lowest point. If you don't convey that, he and that could she be don't like, know. Everything is going, I thought, that the, and sometimes you could be just in complete shambles and they'd be like, I thought we were doing good. I have no and idea. And you got to say, I'm like, you really? Look, no, that, that's what's going like, on. You that's really what's going thought on. we were okay? Again, like, because, you're not seeing, because people get wrapped up in their own yeah, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like again, we going. To, I'm going to work every day. We got like, these I've kids. I've been crying all day. You really have not noticed. I ain't even like, been here all day. Like I, I was at work, you was doing, you was at work. Really? You was, like again, people have lives, and it's not that yeah. you literally don't give a fuck about that other person. But I'm so consumed in the everyday goings and comings that I might not, I might legit be neglecting you unintentionally. While you crying out for help, yeah. So just because you say it once, like no, you gotta say it again. Like you, you gonna, might have yes. to, yeah. Like I have to learn hey. that. Like you're gonna say stuff multiple times. You, you're just going to say stuff over and over. There's never going to be a point where a person is just like going to get it. And sometimes they'll, but just by human nature, we're just disappointing. You know, it's hard for us to be, we may do something for a little while and then, you know, we'll fall back off. And then it's in those moments where you just have to be like, and, and better yeah. here. I don't feel appreciated or, or whatever, you know, whatever it is that you need. What happens when they have done everything that you all have said? I've expressed it several times, and this person has basically let me know they understand what I'm saying. It's so it's not like they don't get it. It's been expressed several times. They say they acknowledge what you said. They understand it. They still have not changed anything about it, and you're suffering inside, but you don't want to leave because the kids, the lifestyle that has been That's there. hard for me because I, I would want to leave so I can't, you know. No, and that's, that's like you you being selfish and you, and you literally you just, yeah. and, and you be, you're being fucked up towards the kids unintentionally because you don't want to leave but you're slowly creating an environment that when it's time to leave or the situation forces one party to leave or the other it's going to trickle down to the kids because what you could have left off of in the beginning but you didn't choose to express it or communicate it or whatever the case may be it's going to change when, let's say, you start choosing yourself and doing other shit. But the person's not looking at it like, oh, they felt like da 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 da. Like, no, they did da 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 da. And this is the message that they're conveying in the home, whether it's intentional or unintentional. So the moment you feel like, yeah, I've done X, Y, and Z, I've tried to communicate however many times, make one last statement and make sure it's loud and clear. If these needs aren't met, or we ain't having these conversations about whatever the case may be, I'm leaving. Be, be clear. I'm not even doing that, Marcus. It's a motherfucking wake up call. My bags are at the door. When you come that too. Home, be intentional. I'm out. Look, like, be, we've talked be about very, this. Be this very is just intentional. not working for me anymore. Let you be at your mama's house for three months. Bet his ass and be like, all right, baby, what we need to do? Yeah, like, because again, gonna do we that get or wrapped gonna up be in like, ourselves. Okay, I'm going to go on over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, Sometimes you just need that wake up call. You need the visual. Like, oh. And I'm not going to stay this, in something too long. This motherfucker visible. not playing with me. Yeah. Like, oh. I'm like, out. I got just. I'm oh, yeah, and, and it seems more. rash. But again, you can't expect for a person just to keep going unheard. Yeah. Like, like it's not it's not realistic. Like, it's not. Like, oh, well, if you really like, and I hear this all the time. If you really love, and I ain't talking about my relationship. I'm just like over the course of my life. Okay. If you really love that person, if you really love, I like, fam, if you really love me. The conversation would have be been sufficient. Yeah. Like it, if, if it was just about me stating it and then we working on it. But, again, you got your life. I got my life. You're not taking me as seriously as I feel like I need to be taken or vice versa, whatever the case yeah. may be. Now we're here. Because you're not moving your feet. You yeah. still stay. You say you're miserable, baby, but you're still here. It's time to go. I'm out. So y'all on the side to choose yourself first. Always. I tell people you the you a priority like choose yourself. I'm because I'm always choose me. I th I think that's subjective. 
I think there are times when you're supposed to choose the other person based off of what's invested. And I ain't talking about materialistic. I'm talking about, okay, if you realize both of you care about the relationship, I ain't saying put your feelings to the side. Hear where they're coming from and figure out how you can meet their needs and incorporate your own. But make sure that you are, you ain't got to be the number one priority. But make sure that you high on the priority list because sometimes, like you gotta like, sacrifice relation, like and that means sometimes of self. So just to let that person know, hey, you ain't gonna hurt, you ain't going unheard. Like I ain't putting you to the back burner. I don't give a. F- it's not that I don't give a fuck about you, whatever the case may be. My bad. I was dealing with X, Y. But and then Z. that needs to be said too, because a lot of times y'all be silently dealing with shit, and, and, it's and like, that's that's if un- you like, had it's, said uh, that two weeks ago, we it's would not be here. You it's, know what I'm saying? It's like because yeah, you take, you can't bring up some. Oh, I was feeling like like no, like did you like, say yeah, it? Yeah, did you say that? Like how? Because if you ain't say it, it don't count. Don't bring some shit up in the heat of the moment to try to save face. And we are notorious for that. Like I ain't talking about men or just people in general. Like, somebody's coming to you with their feelings and emotions because it's hit a certain plateau. Yeah. And because you don't want to face the music and accept your fault or whatever their decision is that was made, you want to weaponize what they're saying and turn it against them. Like, no, no, no. I've been talking. I've been saying blah, 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 blah. And you didn't give a fuck until now because we're at this situation. No. We've had, we've had rumblings. We've had talks. It just went unnoticed and unheard. Yeah. So now we're here. So now you got to deal with the the situation in its entirety. So, no, don't don't take somebody else's pain and turn it into a weapon for yourself because oh, that don't work. That, that yeah. definitely don't work. I definitely be out there. And then, yeah, and then I'm definitely gonna like, leave because now you now you playing with yeah, my emotions you, and yeah, shit. Now you using what you know stuff I've confided in you with against me. Right. And I, uh, uh. Well, ma'am. You've heard what they said. <laughs> They've given you some advice. So I want to uh, open up the floor to you guys. If there's anything that comes to mind, um, any topic you all want to explore really quickly or any shout outs you all want to give, any good news. I want to open the floor to them, whatever it is that you guys want to throw out. Do you want to go? Um, I just got it like, like I said once again shout out to Bree for everything that she's doing um, the, the new career goals that are on the cusp and everything like that keep grinding I've seen the a rise and like your journey and everything like that and it only gets better from here so yeah um, I just want to say shout out to Will for always coming through for having me on I really appreciate it I always have a good time in these discussions um, great I hope to be on here again soon and I love my people. Thank y'all for watching us. I love y'all. Y'all are so supportive. I appreciate y'all coming through. I, I knew this would be a good panel to put together. I knew y'all would set it off. And since I got to outdo Marcus, baby, I'm going to buy you a car. <laughs> I'm going to buy you a car. 2021. Since I got to outdo Marcus, I'm going to buy you a car. Whatever color you want. <laughs> Leather and everything. Bri, I bought you a house. I ain't got to buy you a car. Uh-oh. I can't Uh-oh. even talk to you. <laughs> he, he always got to outdo me right. on my own pod, man. But I appreciate y'all coming through. I hope this was informative for everybody. Leave some comments, some opinions, some emails. Let us know what y'all think. Until next time. Thought Provoker yeah. Podcast. I said, shit, I said an hour. An hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of this shit. <laughs> I know when he got up, I was like, oh.